Hey, welcome to class. My name is Nora. This is another class in our mobility series. So today we are working on the spine. The spine. The spine is so important because it directs so much of the function of the body and the limbs. So if your spine's not feeling good, everything else isn't feeling good. Today's movements are going to be very simple and really we're just working on articulating through the spine. So focusing on undulating the spine like a wave, moving one vertebrae at a time. This is going to be a very slow class where I encourage you to really tune into the body and ask yourself if giving just a little bit more attention to each part of your spine individually gives you a little bit more freedom of movement through the spine. So. Today we just need a block. You'll meet me on the mat in a comfortable seat. All right. Once you're in your comfortable seat, preferably cross-legged if you can manage that, wrap your hands around your knees and close the eyes. Take a deep breath in through the nose and just notice as you inhale and your lungs fill and your diaphragm lowers down to receive the weight of your breath, your spine lengthens. And as you exhale and the lungs empty out and the diaphragm domes up to press the air out, the spine rounds slightly. Breathe in. And out. One more like that. Breathe in. And out. Keep your hands wrapped around your knees. With, an, with your inhale, pull the heart forward, arching the spine like you're doing cow pose. Maybe the chin lifts. And as you exhale, round, curl your tailbone underneath you, drop your chin to your chest. Let the arms straighten as you hang back from your hands, gripping on your knees. Inhale, arch the spine. This is called spinal extension. And exhale, push the back of your heart towards the wall behind you. This is called spinal flexion. Inhale, spinal extension. Exhale, spinal flexion. Stay rounded. Slide your ribs to the right. Draw a big circle coming through the spinal extension, heart forward. Slide it to the left as you exhale and round back. I'm just making big circles with the spine. These are called Sufi grinds. And sometimes they're described as stirring the pot of the internal body because we're starting to wake up our core muscles, our spine, and even our organs as they slip and slide past each other as we move. Don't worry about whether or not you're doing this right or wrong. All you need to do is make circles. That's it. It's okay if sitting bones lift up or your knees get loose or your shoulders are really into it or they're really stiff. That's okay. Keep the breath going. Try to do an inhale for half the circle and an exhale for the other half. Take three more circles this direction. One more circle this way. And when you get back to a rounded spine, reverse your circles, go to the left, take it forward, go to the right, slide it back. And sometimes it can be helpful to imagine your spine like a big wooden spoon that is stirring uh, the, the soup pot that is made up of your pelvis and your legs. <laughs> Yeah, we might even be getting into the hips a little bit here, warming them up as well. Go for last five.
final two. Make your final circle and then we'll come to sit at the center of ourselves with our shoulders stacked over our hips in stillness. I just want you to notice what that continuous repetitive mood, movement might have shifted inside of you, maybe physically, maybe emotionally, maybe energetically. And gently blink the eyes open. Let's come to tabletop, hands and knees. Once you're in tabletop, spread all 10 fingers wide, knees as wide as your hips, but then try to tear the mat apart between your knees. You're sort of pressing the knees towards the outer edges of the mat. Now we're going to move through cat and cow, spinal extension and spinal flexion, but we're going to do so with a little bit more emphasis on where we're moving. So I want you to start each of these movements of the spine at the tailbone. So right now we're in a, an easy neutral. As you take your next breath in, tilt your tailbone up to the sky. And then start to drop the belly and then drop the rib cage and then let your shoulders glide together and your heart sink and then lift your chin and lift your gaze. Now as you exhale, start at the tailbone again. Curl that tailbone under, round through the low back, the mid back. Start to spread the shoulder blades apart and push the floor away and then drop the head down. Inhale, start at the tailbone, curl it up. Vertebrae by vertebrae, moving up through the spine, heart pulls through the upper arms, and then chin lifts. And then start at the tailbone again. Tailbone curls down. Low back rounds, mid back rounds, upper back rounds. Push the floor away, surrender the head. Let's go three more. Your own breath. Use the full inhale to curl from tailbone up through the crown of the head. And then whole exhale to turn the tailbone down and round through the entire spine. And you'll notice that there are parts of the spine that are sticky, right? Parts of the spine that want to move together. Parts of the spine that are hard to move just a piece at a time. And that's okay. That's pretty normal for a human spine, but it's a good story to know about the body. One more round. Inhale, neutral spine. From here, we'll come to standing on the knees and you'll bring your block in. Now, if you're on hardwood floor or you have sensitive knees, I do recommend that you put a towel underneath the knees for this next exercise just to protect those little, those knee joints as they push into the floor. So take your block. Some people like the medium setting. If you have wider hips, you'll probably like the medium setting. If you have narrower hips, you'll like the narrower setting. It's entirely up to you. We just want to feel uh, like we have something to squeeze around so that those inner thighs are activating and the glutes are turned on because they're going to provide stability for the lower body. And now we're going to move through all of the motions of the spine and notice if we can do so without the hips coming into this. So think about your hips being encased in a block of cement. They do not move. And that's kind of what the block is here to uh, simulate. <laughs> so let's take the arms and you'll cross them over the chest. And you're going to make fists with those hands. You want those arms to be stiff and strong because again, we don't want the arms to be doing the movements that the, the spine should do. We don't want the shoulders to be moving uh, to help out the spine. We don't want the hips to be moving to help out the spine. We wanna just see between your waist up through the back of the neck without interference from front body getting in the way. So here we go. Take an easy breath in. We're gonna start easy. With the exhale, take your right shoulder and dip it towards the floor. A little side bend. Keep those inner thighs squeezing. Inhale, come back to center. 
Exhale, dip your left shoulder towards the floor without the hips sliding to the right. Hips stay exactly where they are. Inhale, center. Let's go again. Dip right shoulder to the floor. We're just finding some lateral side bending now in the spine. Left shoulder. Back to center. One more time. Right shoulder. Center. Left shoulder. Center. From here, take both of your elbows and rotate them over to the right, looking over that right shoulder. Watch if that left hip wants to turn as well and come with you. Try to keep both of your hips square. Both of the front of the hip points point straight forward like headlights. Inhale, center. Rotate both of your elbows and look over the left shoulder. Inhale, center. Go right. Shoulders come along with you, but hips do not. One more time, each side. Come back to center. Now we'll do spinal extension and spinal flexion. We've already done this when we were seated as well as when we were in tabletop, but it's going to be harder here. So I'm gonna turn and show you from the side because it's very easy to let the hips compensate by either letting them slide back or letting them push forward. You wanna keep those hips stacked directly over the knees and not have them move at all. Again, think about them being encased in that block of cement. Squeeze the arms, squeeze your fists, take a breath in. Start at the chin, drop it to the chest. Then round your shoulders forward. Start to round the upper back. Start to round the mid back. Watch, as soon as those hips wanna to start to move, that's it. That's as much spinal flexion you have without the hips and the low back compensating. Now, start to lift the heart. Start to lift your chin. Start to lift the elbows. As soon as the hips want to slide forward, that's it. That's it. That's as far as you go. That's as much spinal extension you have without the pelvis helping you. Again, chin to chest. Round forward as soon as the hips start to move. That's as far as you go. Lift the elbows. Lift the chin. Find a little back bend without the hips sliding forward. One more time, we round, this is spinal flexion. And then lift the heart, this is spinal extension. Nice job, bring it back to center. You can remove your block and set it off to the side. Bring your hands down to the floor, tuck your toes, walk your hands back, lift your knees up, roll onto the feet and come into a forward fold. We're going to work on rolling through the spine again. Like I said, we're going to do a lot of that today. So put a gentle bend in the knees. Let the torso hang. Take a big breath in. Shift weight towards your heels. Keep those knees bent as you start to push the floor away from you through the feet. And start to roll up through the spine starting at the tailbone. And then as soon as the arms are long enough that the fingertips are now hanging in the air, activate your hands and reach those fingertips towards the floor. Reaching the hands towards the floor will slow down the roll, will help you resist rolling up, uh, which will force you to uh, put a little bit more attention on each vertebrae moving on its own. We're still rolling up to standing. Keeping the head heavy, keeping those arms reaching towards the floor until the hips stack over the heels and the shoulders stack over the hips. When the ears stack over the shoulders, bring the arms all the way up to the sky. Take a big breath in and reach tall. Exhale, bring the chin down to the chest. Now we reverse it. Take the arms out in front of you and punch the arms forward so that your shoulder, shoulder blades spread apart. And now start to round down through the upper back, through the mid back, through the lower back, 
keep reaching towards the floor as you start to round through the low back and hinge at the hips, knees bending as you surrender all the way down to the floor. Two more times like that. Take a breath. Push the floor away through the heel. Start to drag your tailbone towards the floor. Feel those hamstrings light up as you pull the back of the pelvis down. As soon as the fingertips can hover, actively reach your hands towards the floor. And then keep rolling up piece by piece. Piece by piece. Piece by piece. No rush. Hip stack over heels, shoulder stack over hips, ears stack over shoulders, inhale, arms up. Exhale, chin to chest. Bring the arms parallel to the earth and reach them forward so the shoulder blades spread apart and use that as the initiation into the rounding of the entire spine. Keep breathing. We have one more round. Your own time, your own breath. Inhale here. Use your exhale to initiate. Weight in the heels, press the floor away. Roll up. Arms up at the top, reach on a breath in, exhale, chin to chest, arms in front of you, spread the shoulder blades, and start to reach the crown of the head, and then your fingertips towards the floor. A halfway lift. Walk your hands out. Drop back into tabletop. Cross your ankles behind you. Sit behind your heels and bring your block with you. We're going to lay down on the back and do a little bit more rolling through the spine. <laughs> nice and slow, but this is going to give you a little bit more challenge because we'll be working with gravity in a different way. So once you're laying on your, on your back, you'll take your arms overhead with the block between your hands. And you wanna be able to let the uh, thumbs rest on the earth. If you need to bend the elbows a little bit, that's okay, no big deal. And then extend your legs all the way up to the sky. Now we're going to move towards plow pose or halasana. So without using any kind of momentum, keep the upper body where it is. Start to take your toes back towards your face. It's okay if the knees bend, you wanna feel your Lower back, start to peel up off the floor. Keep reaching those toes overhead as you feel your mid-back roll up off the floor. And then maybe some of the upper back rolls up off the floor as the toes maybe touch that block or they're reaching overhead. And then as slow as you can, keeping the arms active, start to roll down, feeling one piece of the spine at a time, touching back, down, to the floor. It takes a lot of core control, right? And that's the key, that having a strong core as well as strong legs means that our spine can move a little bit more freely. We're going to do that two more times. So toes reach back towards the face, start to feel the tailbone and sacrum roll up, and then the low back, and then the mid back, keeping those arms actively reaching overhead. Maybe the upper back curls up as well. And then roll it down slow. The closer you keep the thighs to the chest, the more you'll be able to control it. Okay. 
one more round like that. Toes reach back, roll up the spine with control. And roll down without momentum. Keep those hands reaching for the block. And if you notice that that block wants to lift up off the floor, that your arms want to lift up off the floor, I recommend that you go back, put a weight on top of this block, like a kettlebell, or even if you have just some dumbbells, throw weights on there and do that exercise again. It'll really help you slow down and roll through the spine. Now extend the arms out and, or pardon me, extend the legs out and we'll go the other way. So take a deep breath in through the nose. Flex your feet. Take the block between the hands up to the sky. Keep reaching that block forward as you tuck your chin to your chest. And then start to lift your shoulder blades up off the floor. And then your mid back. Keep those legs reaching forward as you curl all the way up. And then that block comes up overhead at the top as you find a straight spine. Now we roll down with control. Keep the arms and legs reaching forward. The more you push that block forward, the more you'll round the upper back. Take time to roll over the tailbone and the sacrum and then the low back and then the mid back and then the upper back. Take the block overhead. Two more like that. Block up to the sky. Spread the shoulder blades as you reach up. Chin to chest. Navel pulls down into the spine as you curl up. And then set up tall block overhead. Block in front of you, spread the shoulders as you reach forward, and then round back. Like someone has your spine on a string, and they're pulling back on that string, slowly curling you all the way back down to the ground. We have one more round. Lift, reach up, chin to chest, peel up. Go slow. Beautiful. Once you get to the top, take your block, place it between your legs. On the tall setting, I think if you have a very deep forward fold, you can always take it lower. All we're going to do is round. Take chin to chest. Walk the hands forward. Place that forehead anywhere on the block that feels good for you. And we have five deep breaths into the entire length of the spine. Gently walk yourself back up, tall seat. For the final portion of this class, you have the opportunity to do supported fish pose, which is one of my absolute favorite restorative postures. So for this, you will need two yoga blocks. If you don't have two yoga blocks at home, know that you can use one yoga block and a stack of books or even two stacks of books. So for the setup, uh, you'll place one block at the far end of your mat on the medium setting, parallel to the short end of the mat. And then you'll place the other block perpendicular to that about six inches in front of it. That first block we placed at the far end, that's for your head. The second block we placed closer to us is for the shoulders. You'll bring your hips, uh, let's say about six inches, 10 inches in front of that second block. You'll bring the hands behind you and help yourself lower down. And I like to take one hand to that block that's going to go underneath the shoulders and I can kind of slide it and move it on the floor as I lay myself back and I want the bottom edge of that block to land right about where my shoulder blades land right at that sports bra line if you wear a sports bra and then you'll recline all the way back arms come overhead to help you find that second block to place it underneath the head so it feels well supported arms rest at your sides Legs can extend. If you're experiencing low back pain here, that's probably a sign that the block 
underneath your shoulders is too low, you might need to slide that block a little bit higher on the back body. And I always say it's a little bit, um, it's better to have the block a little bit too high than a little bit too low. And we take some deep breaths here. To come out, gently slide the soles of the feet to the floor. Choose one side. You'll drop the knees to that side, and you'll bring both of your hands to that side of the body. And then use your hands to help yourself gently roll off of the blocks without straining the head, the neck, or the shoulders. And you can rest for a moment on your side. And when you're ready, you can press up and meet me in a comfortable seat. Hands to heart center, bow chin to chest. Fill up with a little bit of gratitude for the spine that keeps us upright and twisting and turning and side bending and bending over and <laughs> back bending. The spine really is one of the most miraculous things about the human body. Let it go. Thank you so much for joining me for class today. Uh, if you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up. Uh, give me some feedback. I'd love to hear what you think. And uh, I hope to see you again for another class in the mobility series. Until we meet on the mat again soon. Namaste.